Now let's go to our persona today. Age 35, this is the age where as most of you know, we are finally eligible to buy HDB. When I was deciding on like what, what kind of units to get, and Melvin uh, was saying, go and get a four-room flat, Alexa, go and get a four-room flat. I'm like, why? You get really right, you live in one room, you rent out the other two bedrooms and you get them to pay your mortgage. So I think right, that was actually a good idea. So welcome everyone to another episode of NOTG Banter Series. Uh, today we have Alexa and Yongjun to together to discuss a little bit in terms of uh, some of the uh, case studies and personas that we've introduced. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Um, so very quickly, uh, just a quick summary in terms of the different seasons. Mm. These also show the different uh, investment uh, stages and seasons of life that a lot of our buyers are in. So for today's episode, we're going to deep dive into this spring uh, persona. So maybe I'll just have Alexa share with us a little bit about this uh, uh, person, persona over here, Charmaine, uh, who is also in the spring season. If, maybe uh, if you could just go back a slide. Mm -hmm. Or two. Yeah, just this like. One. Yeah, so actually, if you look here, um, <laughs> spring is actually age 25 to 35. And then we have summer, age from 35 to 45. Now, let's go to our persona today. Okay. So, our yeah. profile over here, she's Charmaine. She's hmm. age exactly at 35. Right. So I would, yeah, so I would say she's like end of the spring season, the start of her summer. And uh, some years ago, I won't quote the exact number of years. This was exactly myself. Mm. So I could really relate to this profile when I saw it. And um, if you are a single lady in this profile, and you identify with it. I think you want to stay on to pay attention to this segment. Okay. So all my single friends out there, my classmates, please uh, pay attention. <laughs> So this lady over here, okay, single professional, income level at $6,000, marital status, all single ladies. Okay. Mm. So obviously highly educated. Uh, in this case, they qualified her as a spring season. But as I mentioned earlier, she's actually maybe also heading towards, towards summer spring, already. Yeah. Mm. So same objectives as I had some years back. Okay, um, mm. age 35. This is the age where, as most of you know, we mm. are finally eligible as buy Singaporean HDB. singles. Yes, to buy HDB. Because that has, the age thing has been the biggest. The most painful thing. Yes, the most to painful wait, right? thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, so objective here, she wants a home, wants to move out and not stay with parents, which mm -hmm. I can understand at age 35. Government, are you listening? Okay. <laughs> uh, fortunately for her, she has a rather well-paying job. So she does have enough cash and CPF at least for a one bidder condo down payment. Mm. So these are her fears and they were actually honestly the fears I had also. La. She's not sure if she should go for HDB resale or a two-room BTO or a one-bedroom condo. And her desire is very simple. She just wants to have a place to stay. She wants to design and renovate it to her own needs. Okay? So with that, let's go on to the next slide. So I did a quick affordability check because I think that's the first thing yeah. maybe most singles want to know, right? How much Financial, they can afford. Yeah. Mm. So based on her income, for HGB resale, she can loan about $300,000. And for private, she can loan about $630,000. So mm. what does that mean? Let's go to the next slide. So I have some simple assumptions that I made mm. for this case, okay? Yeah. Uh, number one, based on the private quantum, okay, assuming that she has enough cash and CPF for the private condo down payment with the maximum loan, mm. I'm assuming in terms of the cash and CPF, she has about $210, okay? Mm. So no matter if she's buying... $210,000. Uh, yes, $210,000 in cash and CPF right now. Yeah. So be it she used for private or HDB, yeah. she has that amount of money. Okay. Uh, we are not going to take into account buyer stamp duty. We are going to assume that she has that put aside because I don't want to complicate things. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also are going to assume that she has spare cash for renovation. Okay. If you don't, then that's a problem but you go and settle that yourself. You okay? really renovate yeah, yourself like, uh, before, yeah, but if it's a BTO, you still have to renovate. Oh, yeah. 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 So I'm just going to assume you have some money somewhere aside. Okay. So yeah. I don't want to complicate things. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the quantum at which she can buy the HDB resale and the private. So the resale quantum we are looking at is about $390,000 and the private is around $840,000. So in terms of the quantum, it's what, what do you think? It's slightly on the lower end, right? In fact, yeah. I think 
for okay, let's just maybe round it up to about four hundred k for HDB. Mm. I think for four hundred k HDB, probably can maybe still get like a smaller, older three room flat in some of the location. But of course. Um, this is also assuming we have enough cash because typically uh, at around that 400k, I think you most likely will still need to pump in quite a bit mm. for for renovation. Yeah, and all just, that. Then there's a, there's a huge difference also. I think mm. to all the audiences out there, it's, it's more to realize that how come based on the same income, right, the quantum that you can buy based on private and HDB is so different. Mm. Correct. Because correct. One, uses, one uses MSR, which is for HDB, the mortgage mm. serviceability ratio and private, they use the TDSR. Yeah, so some of my mm. single friends, I mean... um. How do I put it? In our current generation, right, we are quite lucky. A mm. lot of us are comfortable or lucky enough to actually be able to stay with our parents until like a certain age. Uh, we don't feel the push to move out. So at this point of time, I do have some friends where they are like, okay, maybe it's time. I take a look at the market and see what I have. And they ask me to link them up with the banker to help mm. them do checks yeah. on That's the loan. IP, yeah. yeah, they got quite a shock when they realize that, hey, my loan amount is actually not that much compared to how much the prices of houses have moved. Have moved. Which yeah. is why I always tell my single friends, please, okay, if you are eligible to m- maybe like buy take a HDB flat, yeah, yeah. yeah, take action because mm. our prices have never dropped and you can't assume that you'll be able to safely live with your parents like forever. I think all of us before we entered the industry, we did we never knew this, right? Uh, we, myself, we I didn't. La. I was happily living with my parents. I think for, for most people who are, mm. if we are not doing in the real estate business, we will never know why how important it is to start early. Correct, correct. Yeah. So maybe uh, with this in mind, we know about the quantum she's looking at and you guys have shared the kind of sizes yeah. and the type of properties. Let's go to the next page. So, uh, okay, this is just a summary again. So she basically wants a home, mm. la, okay? Uh, I'm going to break this down into three different slides. So the first slide is um, actually to look at the options she has if she wants to go for two-room BTO. Personally, my, just to share, right, I don't think most of you know this, but when I turned 35 some years ago, <laughs> <laughs> I did apply as soon as I could for a two-room BTO flat. Uh, at that point of time though, um, I was applying for sale of balance because I didn't want a long wait. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. And I think, I suspect, please Correct me if I'm wrong. Normally, sale of balance flats would normally have uh, priority for families instead of singles, I think. The but you're going and for a two-room, uh, right? It's a two-room. Two room but if for the same flat, it was a couple with a baby applying for it, I think they would have priority over me because mm. they would need the flat mm. more urgently than I do. Yeah. Um, but because I like the area, it was around Fernville. So unfortunately, I didn't get it. Lah. So just for a comparison sake, right? Um, this is for the BTO exercise that just passed recently in June. So over here, we have the first group, which mm. is your sort of non-mature estates, Jurong East, Woodlands, and Yishun. All in the OCR. Yes. And um, actually, this time around, it's very lucky because I don't know whether you recall, some years back, actually, um, we singles are relegated to only non-mature estates mm. for yeah, BTO right, flats. Yes. At the point of time, I was very frustrated because my family members were going, hey, Bishan has BTO, Amokyo has BTO, why don't That's you apply? Location. Right, I told them, look, Bishan and Amokyo, it's not that I don't want to apply, mm. but I'm, a, elig- yeah, yeah, I'm eligible. Yes, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not eligible. You know, my ovaries not contributing anything to the Singapore state. <laughs> Okay, they don't want me living in the central area. So I'm like, uh, the area I currently can choose from is Tengah. Then my dad asked, where's Tengah? <laughs> I told him precisely, where's Tengah? If I live in Tengah, will you go and visit me? <laughs> and then the, they went silent. Okay, <laughs> so those are the kind of of um, the things that we face. Limitation. Yeah, it's really a limitation mm. because yes, I want a cheap flat, but I don't really want to. And I'm not trying to put down uh, people who are living in Tengah, but you need to understand my whole life, I was living in D20. So Tengah is a completely different estate, different a- area away from where my core family and friend nucleus yeah. is and mm. from anything that I'm familiar with. So I am unwilling to move there. It's a totally whole new location whole for you to, to, to upload into that area as well. Correct, correct. And not to mention at the point of time, uh, I mean, now there's news about Tengah, but yeah. <laughs> those is years back... Well, I think yeah. the is very important. Like, if you correct. want to... If you want to make a place more popular, the, the the news media needs to be the one to hype up Correct. the entire area. At, at that point of time, I was also not in the real estate industry yet. Uh. I literally had to go to Google to search where is Tengah. Tengah. Because mm. there is no like MRT that I can not find yet. to yeah. get a gauge about yeah. where it exactly is. La. So to be honest, it's not appealing. But I think from here, uh, I mean, some good news. We got uh, three areas. And actually, if you just look at the selling price, uh, excluding grants, right? 
easily Charmaine with a 210k, uh, you know, she can afford this. Now, let's go to the next one. You can click. So, good news yeah. is that, uh, yeah, you current singles right now, you can go to Mature Estate. So, Tampanese is open up to you. And the next one, and of course, you know, la, mm. now they have the prime location. Come yeah. tell me more. Prime location, what do you all know about it? <laughs> okay. So, okay. Mm. Yeah, so for, I think for the new uh, BTO exercises, um, I think it's starting June of this year. Uh, there's already this new policy, or not so new anymore. In fact, the mm. announcements has, have come quite some time already. Um, gener- basically speaking, you're going to have three different clusters. Your standard, your plus, and your prime. Mm. Of course, each cluster comes with different regulations different policies that restricts your MOP mm. and also there are also certain clusters that also restricts in terms of like your subsidy clawback right. yeah. and also uh, sort of a, a bit of like profit taking and all that mm. um, because the whole intention is that all these BTOs and HDB is really not something that's meant for uh, the mass market to really look at it as an investment uh, kind of uh, engine. The yeah. government really wants to keep this as a mass market Public housing. and butter yes, uh, to allow most of Singaporeans have a roof over their head which is why you see different policies for different locations. So if you're single, yeah. which one would you all choose? Um, I would say for single-wise, it really depends because... Uh, I think there's a lot of factors that will yeah. come. This is a very loaded like, question, Yong like, You can't just answer <laughs> it like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think are, whether yeah. I'm single or married, it, it yeah. makes a difference because I think like personally, I like someone where... I mm-hmm. like somewhere that there's a lot of co- convenience. Okay. So like MRT will be important. So you will choose prime location? Me. Um, oh, but now the mature hey, Woodlands also got MRT. We no, got TEL yeah. there so that connects to yeah. Because Prime, you're talking about the I guess the proximity to city center. Yes, and right. I guess it depends on are you working in city center? Do you need that proximity? Or are you working from home like half? Because the, the prime location, uh, just to share with you guys, the MOP period is yeah ten yeah. years. Okay, but what I want to say is that the main thing I want to highlight here is that by looking at the price, right, you can see with the two hundred and ten thousand dollars she has in cash and CPF up to the prime location, even without grants, right. She can afford. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the main thing about BTO? Cheap. Okay, you subsidized. get it? Yes, very well subsidized. Very well subsidized. Uh, so if you manage to get one, congrats to you. That's okay, so I did a comparison table. Hopefully I didn't make any animation mistakes. So there's going to be basically about, I think, 10 factors that I'm looking at. Hmm. So looking at the first option, uh, two-room BTO, talking about price, hmm. we already know straight away, low entry costs, grants available, and you can, she can fully pay up easily if she wants. And in fact, with grants, right, the price actually ranges from 40k all to 100, 129k. Mm. Yeah. Which Depending is, on your income level is, and all that. Yeah, it's really cheap. If you, stay your parents, if you stay near your parents, then it's even better, right? You get even way more going. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. So, um, when I was bringing in this mm. price point, right, I was actually bringing in without grants so you're correct with the first timer grants and the proximity mm. grant right you can easily like lower your price even more okay next is the size okay so those boxes wow. that are highlighted in red <laughs> are actually things that I personally was concerned about mm. yeah. so maybe Charmaine would be concerned about because for me right I know la, seven. <laughs> I find it a bit small. What I think not everyone has seen a, how a 3 at 7 square feet house looks like. Mm, you can go to HDB website mm, yeah. to see. But I mean, personally for me, I do find it small. But maybe from a different perspective for two of you. I guess, okay, like 3 at 7, I think it's really on the smaller end. But for 4 at 4, I mean, that's also pretty much the one better condo these mm. days. Mm. I mean, the newer project. So you get, I think, just the really the bare necessities. Okay. Um, a yeah. kitchen space, a bathroom, a bedroom, maybe like a smaller living. So if two of you were yeah. singles, like really living alone, would this space be sufficient for you? What do you think? I think I need to see it for myself. Because 3 and mm. 7, for, for Are you a minimalist? <laughs> I'm a minimalist, but ultimately, right, this house is not just a room. Mm. It, it has your, your, all your, your kitchen. Mm. You know, you have your living room. Mm, it does. It you does. might not have your dining room. I don't know. It's a dining, dining space. A dining <laughs> space. Converge with your living area. Yes, yes. And probably one bedroom. Sliding door to separate the living room and the bedroom okay. normally. So ideally, I think we need to, if I'm the one choosing and then if my budget is as such, right, I'll need time to adjust in terms mm. of lifestyle. But ultimately, if my goal, mm. you know, is just to stay in it mm. and eventually I want to move up that ladder, mm. I don't mind. Because ultimately, if I'm not having, you know, that married lifestyle, I'm, I'm not getting married, then... Uh, it's one possibility also. Okay. But the strongest attraction point will, of course, be the price. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, right, I mean, yeah. okay, la, I'm a very frugal, like, cheapskate kind of person, okay? 
<sighs> don't know why I'm exposing this on camera. Is sufficient though. To me, okay, I'm a, a very sentimental person. Mm. I, I I still keep like uh, letters written from my friends like oh. years ago. Uh, I have thrown out a lot of it, but I would say the important ones I still keep. So I think for it for it's just enough to put all the letters. I don't think it's enough. All the love it's, letters. I don't think it's enough for me. Like, maybe when I'm like 60 or 70. But right now, I think I'll enjoy something a little bit bigger. bigger. But the thing is that the price was too attractive to ignore, mm, which is yeah. why I applied. Because if I get it, then it's like good, you know, but Easily. I didn't. Uh, so too bad, uh, okay? Mm. <laughs> Luck was not on my side. Uh. Okay, How many times do you try it? Uh, just one time. Because oh, after that, good, yeah. uh, that was when I switched to real estate. Oh. Yeah, and you know they ask you for your income and all this. Wow. So, okay, so that was the one thing I didn't consider. What was your number? What was, what was your number? Did I even get a number? Because remember, yeah. I applied for SBF. So you didn't get a number? Yes. Okay. There was only those few units that I was really trying was my luck. Very, very... Right. Maybe if I had applied for like the pure BTO launches, I think I might have a chance to get a number. But mm. SBF flats normally left about five years, yeah. or something. Very competitive. Very competitive. And like I said, the priority will not be given to me if a family needs it more. Mm. For sure. That's mm. true. Yeah. I mean, that, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so this one also is restricted to each launch. So like I said, fortunately for now, you know, you singles are really lucky compared to some years back where they were only restricted to non-mature estates. Now at least mm. you have mature estates. But uh, for you guys, I guess if you were in this position, would you be okay to just go to whatever location that was given for that launch? It could be a tiring um, weight, la, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess for me, the location-wise, I would really also have to look at, like, you know, like what's surrounding the area? Is it like mm. already developed or is it some place where the I government... I mean, eventually they will to, all be developed to, la, because this is Singapore. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think at this point, mm, at this point, for mm. me, it's like at this point, because I don't foresee myself like staying in this two-room BTO for like another 10-15 years mm. waiting for my neighbourhood to slowly develop. Mm. So you want I something would, that's convenient. Yeah, I would prefer somewhere that, you know, if I need like market, hawker centre, okay. it's already there or it's not too far away so that I don't have to wait out. So that's, um, this definitely will be a factor, the, the location. Yeah. How about you, Yongchen? I think if I'm 25, because now Charmaine is 35, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if Charmaine is 35 and she chooses a mature estate, mm. then she has to wait 10 years. So next time she'll move, she'll be 45. Let's stop rubbing in our faces. No, I think guys, guys, I wouldn't be an him. issue. So I'm, I'm still thinking, but if I'm 25, I don't mind choosing the prime one. Mm. Because for me, um, local is important. But if you're 25 and single, you, 25 and single, you can't even um, buy. You have to be married, man. I probably man. wouldn't stay in like outskirts of Singapore because mm. I used to grow up from the outskirts. But <laughs> You make it sound like it's <laughs> so far. No, I was this... outskirts of this tiny island, but I, I, I don't think I'll ever... Which, which area? I'm curious. In South? the west. Jurong? Southwest? Chochukang. Oh, that's okay lah. Huh? Chochukang got, it's quite developed. At least not Jurong West, right? Uh -huh. Hey, gu guys, <laughs> he's chopping <laughs> shit. Jurong West. People no, are going to find him. We're, we're all very unbiased. Yeah. We're all very unbiased. We're all very unbiased. You know, like, Jurong properties are also doing very well. Yeah. Huh. Correct. Across the HDB. No, but I'm, I mean, this anyway. is purely talking about mm. livability. Okay. Right? I mean, if you have the means, you probably wouldn't choose Jurong West. So even if the if the price is cheap, but if that launch, that particular launch did not have a location that you like, you mm. skip it lah. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite location driven sensitive. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I think that is one of the main, um, not downside, but something that uh, for our audiences, if you're going or thinking about BTO, the fact that every round, every exercise, mm. there's only this limited number of locations. How many times are you prepared to, to go wait out to try? There are some colleagues who went for several rounds and they yeah, still couldn't I mean, get. Yeah, that one really. And, and we are it could be a long like wait, you know. Your mm. peak prime yeah. years of your life. So I think that's something that is important for mm. you to discuss. <clears throat> correct, whether correct. Is it uh, for mm. your own stay or maybe with a partner yeah. uh, okay. as well? So the next thing was the rental aspect. So this was one thing actually at that point of time, it didn't occur to me that actually for two room flats, right? Uh, after the MOP period, right? Because there's no room, what your two room flat only got one bedroom, yeah. right? Yeah. So you have to rent out the whole, whole thing. thing. Yeah. Then where you live, ah? Uh? <laughs> Go back to parents, or un unless you assume that you mm. you marry la. But then yeah. if you don't, basically there is no rental option. Yeah, you're just it's stuck really there. for own stay. Yes, there's no to... income, extra income potential to speak of. Okay, next one. Ah, uh, of course this one is good la because uh two room flat brand new BTO you probably spend minimal like less than ten k or twenty k to furnish it. So mm. these are the good points. Okay, mm. let's go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, legal considerations when selling. 
Okay, this one I think Yongchun mentioned earlier already. Uh, she's 35. She probably need to wait three years. Four, if it's, four, yeah. yeah, three to four years. And then another mm-hmm. five years. If it's not prime, la, if it's prime, it's another 10 years. Mm-hmm. So minimally, we're talking about an eight-year wait. And mm-hmm. she'll be about 43 years old before she can sell. I think the diffi- difficulty comes with what if there are some life changes along yes. the way? I think that's eight the key. years is a that's very long stretch. I mean, I personally have given up hope for myself. <laughs> but you know, for Charmaine, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe for Charmaine, in the next eight years, she could potentially find her partner and have kids. And if her name is stuck in this, maybe yeah, some She probably can't do much changes. I don't know. I mean, I mean, HGB is always open, right? Mm. Uh, I guess, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe they are pro-married. So if you have like kids they can, and stuff. They might have few. Yeah, you yeah. know, if you get married true, true. and then you want to buy a house which is a matrimonial home and obviously a two-room flat is insufficient. Mm. So case on case, case by case basis. Okay. Mm. So number seven is the ease of financing. As, as we know, because it's really, really cheap, she can basically not even take any loan if she wants. She can just fully pay. It. So in terms of the down payment, monthly mortgage, very also comfortable. very comfortable. Uh, also do note that uh, most banks do not finance two-room flats. Uh, maybe, but you can just go to HDB loan. I think mm-hmm. they'll help you out with that. So maintenance costs also for BTO flats. I mean, for HDB flats in general, quite low. And I think mm. I was checking, it was maybe around $70 monthly. Mm-hmm. Neighborhood amenities, this one really depends because I think yeah, like you guys should. Yeah. Depends on whether that uh, area is developed already. Uh, next one is the resale appreciation potential. Uh, the fact is that because you got this BTO at such a low price, mm. uh, I was doing a check on resale uh, two-room units. Do you know what's the average price now? Oh, so okay. assuming they bought at 100k, yes. Yeah. About 300? maybe, yeah, 300. The high 300, 300 yeah. like 380, 390. So I was actually quite surprised because we're talking about a two-room flat and it's already going at 380 to 90 in the resale market. Lah. But the thing is that you definitely can earn mm. if you sell, okay? Mm. So now we'll go to the next slide. Uh, we're going to talk at the resale flat options. Newer and older. Yes, because myself, right, I think if you look at that blue color box at that corner, mm. uh, we're looking at Charmaine's resale flat approximate budget. I'm going to assume that she does get a grant, not the proximity grant, but the first timer grant of 40k. Mm. So thanks to the gov- government also for increasing it because I think just before I bought my flat, they increased it. Previously, it was 20k. So they doubled it. So assuming her budget is 432k, okay, uh, and also assuming that she's age 35 lah. So the flat, if she wants to fully utilize her CPF, at least must be built from 1960 onwards. Okay? Then she gets the the grant. I basically had two options at that mm-hmm. time. I could look at the newer resale flats, option A, or the older resale flats in option B. Actually, you were location sensitive also. I was location sensitive. D20. Which, yes, yeah. yes. But to be honest, uh, at the point of time, D20, right? Um, Not many new options. Where, where is B- D20? Bishan Amokyo. Bishan Amokyo, yeah. And you Thompson? know the price there, right? It's very really high, high for yeah whether is it resale or the newer like flats yeah. it's really very high so it's it, a very mature estate right? it's a mature estate and it's central of Singapore yeah. so um the prices there have always been climbing la. Mm. even so, for the older the, the older, older ones correct, yeah. correct so if I look at option A right actually given this budget of about a 430k I unfortunately would only be limited to two room flats then of course as a very frugal person I'll be like mm. huh why do I pay like this amount for a two-room flat when the BTO is like so much cheaper. You feel the pinch, you know. Mm. Then you feel like it's not justified. So that means the the age of the property in this case doesn't really matter as much to you, is it? I would say, of course, ideally, Mm. I would like a younger flat, Mm. you know. But when I see if I get a flat with a a longer lease, I can only get two-room. So you will prioritize the space. I'll prioritize the space because you know I always tell people like, hey, you know, I want to step in the coffin already, la. Like I can't live for another eighty years anyway. I don't need that long at least, to be honest. Okay. I mean, I'm just comforting myself, guys. Okay. <laughs> I need to find ways to make sense for myself, yeah, right? Make sense because I think with the same budget, if you can go for like a true for, I think mm. in terms of the flexibility and the usability of the home, if let's say you really want to even think about renting, at least you still have a couple of spare room to even consider you don't that, move out that la, correct correct so actually interestingly I think I when I was deciding on like what what kind of uh units to get and Melvin uh, was saying go and get a four room flat Alexa <laughs> go and get a four room flat I'm like why you get me right you live in one room you rent out the other two bedrooms and you get them to pay your mortgage 
So I think, right, that was actually a good idea. Yeah. But then you guys know my personality, right? Mm. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm loud and I talk a lot. But I think all of you guys know I'm actually quite an introvert. I like being alone. So the thought of having a, a bigger flat, but having two rooms being occupied by two tenants and, you know, having to cross paths every day. <sighs> it was a mental hurdle. It's a you mental hurdle for me. Yes, I, sense. I would appreciate the rental income coming in to help service the mortgage. But I'm not sure my mental like state how it will be. I don't know, personally for mm. you guys. Would because usually you know? if you don't stay with a tenant growing up, naturally you'll be a bit more... But some people are more tin uh, yeah. Some people are more tin They're like, hey, no worries. As it long really, as... really depends on how... Um, how much you need the extra source of income? Mm. But, but personally, you, for you two guys, would if you had a choice, would you... Not personally, Joanne don't need lah. <laughs> Joanne don't need that cash. Come on. <laughs> what would I you mean, want? I mean, probably, it really depends. Like, if it really comes to a stage where the, the extra funds... Because, I mean, room rental these days is also not cheap, right? Mm. For, yeah, like, yeah. a common room... You're the two rooms at, will basically yeah. cover service the mortgage. 900 to maybe a 1K. My yeah. room, you're looking at about 1.2, 1.3. Yes. So, I think that is actually quite... It, uh, I think the uh, two room amount. the two room rental can basically cover your mortgage and you get extra, you know. Mm. I think once you rent, right, you'll never go back to without a rental. Really, yeah, you think I feel so? it's a uh, habitual because right, you'll be so so used, how to, say, the you're the so used to having, you know, a lower income. mortgage. Mm. So without it, right, it feels like you are it's very it's very painful. And then you're still staying in the same place. If without that mm. rental. But right? personally so, for you, can you, you? I, I mean make make guys more tin tight, I don't know. I still wouldn't. You still wouldn't. Yeah. So you keep the two rooms empty. No, I I rather buy a place, right? If I definitely need the cash, that means I, I shouldn't even be la. buying. No, I shouldn't even be buying the property in the first place. No, but this one, this one is basically you're saying that for this amount you can get a new two room, either or a or three yeah. or four room. I think at that point of time at Yishun, I could buy, mm. I could buy a four room flat. Yeah. So I was like, but also I don't want to move to Yishun, nah. I mean, mm. it's not that far from Bishan. Almost, it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. still acceptable. But the, the fact is, do I need to move there? To rent out the room. That means you are right, ranking like rent other places, rooms. right? Way too low, right? Because now the D20 location is so important mm. that, you know, if you want to move somewhere else, right, it must have a very compelling... Okay, la, I spoke to... Quite common, right? Yes, I spoke to yeah. a lot of friends who lived in D20 and we grew up in D20 and clients who live in D20. If you look at us centrally on the map, we are really mm. right, right in smack the in the middle in the, of... In the diamond ship yeah. land. Correct. So to go anywhere, right, it is convenient... So, it is a bit hard to move up from there. La. Not to mention, you know, it's a place where you have all your, your top schools. So, the vibe is pretty young because mm. you have students coming in, young New family moving yeah, in. Yeah. Family. So, it's a bit hard not to be biased, la, but obviously I'm biased. Okay? I think, okay, I think for, for this scenario, maybe uh, my personal take is I'll still go for the three or four room instead of the two room. Just not because I want to rent out, but just to give myself that flexibility and mm. the option if one day maybe my family really expands mm-hmm. or I really need that uh, rentability option mm. then at least I have that otherwise I can just use it like a yeah, study because as a single your family size can, can only go up mm. yep right so having you go down means I'm not so, okay. so, so correct so the thing is you can only go up and then having a bigger house mm. gives you that flexibility correct so the only thing to note is that and the size also you see the size I actually go up to 968 eh. mm. ding ding you know, the size is a very big thing for me. The only thing is, yeah, la, the age. Uh, yeah. Normally, when I was looking at this range, right, the age is like, may they till pit between the 60s to the 80s. So, mm-hmm. most of them left about 60-odd yeah. years to 50-odd years. I think that's just something for, especially if like you're mm-hmm. a younger um, HDB buyer and you are planning to really max out your CPF OA, that's just something to take note that your, the balance lease of the property that you're entering into, if you're going for an older flat, needs to be able to cover the youngest buyer. No, and personally was, for me, the yeah, concern was, right. I mean, at this point of time, I'm very, if I'm comfortable living in a flat, mm-hmm. but what if I wanted to exit five years later after my MOP period? The lease would further drop. Yeah. Mm. Then I'm like, hmm, by the time dropped to 50 plus, would anyone still want to buy this? Will I, can I even exit? Yeah. yeah, those are the concerns on my mind. Nah. But price-wise, you know, it was quite okay. Starting from 290k, I think it's okay. All right. 290 is pretty attractive for mm, like a three, four room. But normally, okay, a smaller mm. three room flat line, uh, way further plus. away area. But at least yeah. you have options. You have mm. options. Okay. So let's go to the next page. So once again, going back to this table, okay, if you look at the price point, let's unveil it. So uh, higher entry costs, grants available, this one definitely need to take loan. Mm. Okay, but no problem. 
you have actually uh, more options to choose because you want two-room flat, you can get a newer one. If not, you can go for older three or four-room flat. So I like that flexibility. Mm. Location-wise, also no, resale, no, yeah. no restrictions, okay? Uh, rental aspect, this was the one that was a bit of a highlight for me because if you have at least a three-room flat, you have one spare bedroom. And then, of course, with a four-room flat, um, you have two spare bedrooms. Yeah. Mm. I would say 99% of these <laughs> if units, open, if open. yeah, they do need a uh, renovation. Like. How much do you think like a buyer should set aside for renovation? If let's say we're talking about like mm. a three to four room, maybe based on the example earlier was 500 plus square feet to a Maybe I can use my own house. So mine is a three room flat and I did full guard renovation, including rewiring, changing mm. out windows and doors. And also even the toilet, because I think it was originally two toilet. The previous owner did it into one big one. I converted it back to two. Oh. Minimally, I think at least 50 plus K. Including furniture? Without include without the furniture. Oh, when I added up everything, I mean, I'm a, I'm a type C person, okay? So I did an Excel sheet where I added up the cost of my fridge, the washing machine, uh, even the bed, the mattress, everything. I think that was about 80,000. 80,000 or 3 rooms. And right? I'm not a person who spends on branded brands. Lah. I would say yeah. I didn't choose the worst. I didn't choose the best. I choose like... Mid-tier. Yeah, mid-tier, mid-tier. good quality mm-hmm. things that I can live with. Yeah. Do you so, regret? No, I don't regret. I, I'm... Good yeah, friend. correct. Um, To be honest, the condition of the house that I bought wasn't even that bad. If I had wanted to just move in and live right, I could. Because the previous owner did take good care it of the place. It wasn't tenanted. Like, it was owner... It was owner-occupied. Okay. It's just that um uh the the deco-wise, it wasn't really to my taste. Like, yeah. But Updated. could I move in and live immediately? Actually okay. can. Mm. But I would say some of these units, right, uh, that are on the listing, unfortunately, you really have to renovate. It's not... not you can't move in. in yeah. yeah, you can't move in. My one actually could. So this one was a personal choice for myself lah, because I know it was going to be uh, likely my forever home. I mean, who knows? Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but if it's going to be a forever enough, home, yeah. then I want it to be at least done nicely, comfortably, and at least make sure that all the wiring and all this is in place. Lah. Because mm. you know, lah, it's an older flat. Yeah, the house yeah. is very nice, actually. Oh, thank you, nice. thank you. Thank you. Sakura. Thank you. Sakura. Thank you. Sakura. Guys, stop exposing me. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so legal considerations. Uh can unveil that one. So this one, you do have to wait for a five years mm. MOP period uh, before you sell it. Without the building period. Mm, without the building period. So it's shortened already. La. Ease of financing, uh, I think the down payment is still okay. Um, And then you both have your HDB and bank loan available for you. Maintenance cost, once again, is HDB. So your SNCC fees, also quite low for three-room flat. So neighborhood amenities, normally it's quite uh, no problem one because mm. a lot of these are mature estates. So you have all the amenities. Uh, this was the one that was a bit of a concern. Uh. I mean, mm. although you, you guys value. see my house, you know I really enjoy living it there, but you still want to have that opportunity in the case that, you know, I find my special someone <laughs> and we want to upgrade. Okay, but honestly, right, mm. demand has never been solely dependent on your tenure. I'm just worried because when I bought it, right, I yeah. think it was already 55 years left. Mm. Mm-hmm. So another five years in MOP. But because it's a true room flat. So if it's a true room flat, it might be possible that your buying audience could mm. have been an older couple. Mm. They would be able to stay, you know, to their 95. But because I'll spend a lot of money renovating, la, so there must be a yeah, price. Yeah, I mean, it's, a nice, it's a, such a nice house. I mean, I mean, the renovation is, is one very Oh, maybe you house. could also sell it to like a future single buyer. But that single must be even older, older already. Yeah, 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 because it's it's to possible, meet the thing. Mm. So, this one, but I do have concerns. La. But mm. the location-wise, I'm confident that there'll be people price, who want it. Yeah. It's just whether like the price... Can will I be losing money? Not that uh, I'm seeing this as a money making tool, but I think most homeowners at the minimal do not want to lose money, mm. Yeah, but I think in general, um, across the whole HDB market, even mm. for the older flats, they have also been still been on a gradual slower uptrend. Mm. Um, but of course, like what Alexa mentioned, I think uh for buyers who are really looking for HDB as a as a uh purchase, right, mm. the whole mindset must be very correct in that this is really for own stay. Own stay, yes. Roof, not really not for investment. It's not yeah. for flipping, yes. I want to fl- flip and uh, profit like a two, three hundred after five years, especially for older flat, that might be a challenge. Correct, um, correct. If you're really going in for like the numbers, the investment, then maybe there's another market, which is what we're going to talk about next. Mm. Um, your one bidder condo. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, now we're going to look at Shamin's mm. condo budget, which is around $840,000. Quite mm. decent, quite decent. Uh, I wanted it to be a comfortable one-bedder unit. So I did put a setting, which is mm. at least 
five hundred square feet yeah. If I was to have no filter at all, right, I think to find a uh, one better condo within this budget, there's gonna be many more units than this. Yeah. 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 In fact, I think at this budget range for okay, one wait, better, me... you can find duplexes like with a loft at a bigger size. Than wait, let me are. do a quick check just to see What's if I had no one? if I had no filters, right, and I just no, put no, the that's... price. Let's just put eight eight hundred forty thousand, uh. Yeah. One beta more than five hundred square feet. Let Are you highly likely to find a one plus study with this filter? I think you can find. I'm just gonna put condo. I'm just gonna put condo. Yeah. And I'm gonna put the price point as eight hundred forty. I don't. I'm just curious to see, right? Uh, what's the market supply right now? I think in the RCR there still are. Even you can find freehold, like five hundred plus square feet. But yeah, it it could be like a one plus study also. But one word of advice for Shamin, you know, if Shamin's. you are buying Sha Shamin. Shamins. All the Shamins. Shamins out there. All the Shamins out there. Um, where each other forty thousand. It's also possible that, you know, you might want to wait a little while. <laughs> I don't know. Because the reason being if your choices based on your requirements um doesn't fit in terms of because you are you are talking about um sometimes we also have to talk about exit plan. Mm. Right? If the exit is a concern that you know you might want to uh sell off the unit because you are getting married. Or if you if you manage to find someone, then sometimes you also need to find a house which has a larger buying audience in the end. Mm. So below eight hundred and forty, just mm. if I put below eight hundred forty thousand, right? There are six hundred and seventy seven one betas available. If I change seven seven six hundred seventy seven, if I change to wow. below one million, Yongchun, guess how many one beta units there are below one million? Oh, below a million? Yeah, just below the the, the only filter thousand, I said is below uh, one million. Guess is is a thousand. No, yeah, a thousand. <laughs> two thousand, two thousand and fifty six. So bringing this number up for a reason now, uh, because like you yeah. said, it's the exit uh hmm. plan. But what if what if what Shamin is thinking about this this for discussion is between paying rental and every month she's gonna pay three to four k to rent like a one bidder. Or should she just go and buy a one beta herself? She can rent HDB. Yeah. <laughs> rent I mean, if you're paying $3,000, that you can you can put that for your mortgage. No. A $3,000 mortgage, mm. mortgage can probably get you like close to that quantum. Okay. In terms of, so I, I don't think it would be wise, especially if you're having a, if you have the red passport, like the Singaporean mm. passport, mm. there's no need for you to go and rent mm. uh, just to move out from your mm. parents' place. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think our, our, uh, consensus is the same la, hmm. which is if let's say you're in a position where you can actually afford if your loan can yeah. afford but then another issue is what if you are high spender you know mm. you don't really have a lot of savings mm. you might not have the down payment Yeah, because when you're in $6,000 but you, you might save just a small portion of it Correct. then that becomes a problem that you might not be able to afford that much. Also. Unfortunately for Charmaine, she has. She has 210k <laughs> in her yeah, cash and CBF. She yes. buy that back when yes, she went yes. overseas. Yes, instead of, uh, instead of eating at like, you know, uh, I don't know, some yeah. Haiti yeah. Lao. She eats Thai fun every day. She eats Thai fun every day. Yeah. With, she never order without fish. Without Thai. <laughs> she just eat fun. Yeah. Because when you order fish in a Thai fun, then that defeats the purpose of ordering Thai fun. Is fish very expensive? I don't huh? know. <laughs> How much do you charge? Up to like four dollars, five dollars. Yeah. Uh, Your whole Thai yeah. is like close to ten. Sorry, I I I don't even go Thai fun. I cook really? and I eat at home. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the next slide. There's okay, another Charmaine for you. Okay, so uh, option three. Now we're gonna look at the one better condo. So first thing, right? Uh, the price is actually something I considered because when I was looking at one better condo, I just felt that. Wow, very expensive, very expensive. This is all I could think in my head. Like, wow, 800k, 1 million, eh, very expensive. Um, and of course, no grants. Mm. Uh, of course, at the time, you need to understand, uh, I was also not in the real estate industry yet. Mm. So I didn't really understand about uh, loan and all this kind of thing. So all I could see was the number and think like, wow, how come a two-room BTO costs like 100,000 and a one beta condo can cost like $1 million? It's like, huh? How does this make sense to me? Okay. The jump is too much. The jump is too much, okay? Yeah. Especially when you look, look at the next factor. <laughs> the size is about the same, what? <laughs> so I, I get facilities. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is that I grew up uh, without facilities. So the facilities didn't really matter, matter, matter to me. Yeah, la. True, yeah true. correct. I'm more like a homebody. But the good thing is that at least for condos, right, uh, you are more flexible in terms of the sizing because the mm. older condos, right, for one better, can actually go up to 700. 700 is 
pretty comfortable eh? is... for like a one beta. Oh, I want. Would you buy a seven hundred square feet one beta? If it's the same that quantum and a bigger cute. size, yeah. Like maybe living yeah, but then your bedroom. okay. So basically, why I asked that question is because if you buy into a seven hundred square feet one beta. Yes. If the quantum is too high, mm. they might be too close to. No, it no, but you see, um, all these options are based on Shamin. Or based quantum. on eight hundred forty thousand. Of course, mm. of course. Then the seven hundred square feet is it split into two level? No, no, it's not. But it's single level. But the keyword here is older. Mm. Ninety nine year. Uh ninety nine years. So maybe uh, like already twenty years. So so that's the one thing you need to consider because as you guys know, you know the balas curve and all mm. these kind of things yeah. come into place. Uh, in terms of location, no issue at all. No restrictions. And Rent this one, uh, same thing. Oh, this one should be... Uh, I, I didn't know whether to highlight in red or not. Because the it's negative point... Either, yes, yeah, yeah, negative point is that no spare room for rent. Mm. But positive point is, it's not HDB. You don't need to fulfill whatever MOP yeah. period. You can rent out the whole thing. But the thing is that Charmaine's objective is that she wants to move out. La. Yeah. She wants to live mm. here. But in, in, in the sense that if her life plans change... And let's say she find like uh you know a husband they go and uh, mm. they buy the husband is another house at least this unit yeah she can oh, rent unless she does like a rental arbitrage meaning she can rent out her this one better condo at a mm. very good price like maybe four k mm. and then she rent out a separate uh maybe like a older one better at a cheaper price or mm. maybe like a room rental then she can still like use one rental yeah, to pay like a arbitrage another kind of thing, kind of thing. If really she she just wants to move out not stay with her parents anymore. No, so actually it's interesting that you talk about this because uh, I think in my early days in uh, mm. PLB, me and Christina actually met a couple. Um, They had, I think, one or two children and they were living in a condo in the East Coast with I think maybe two or three bedrooms. So when we met them, right, guess what? This place wasn't under their names. They were renting it. Oh, but they own another property. Good. <laughs> Before, I think before they got, got married when they were both singles, each of them bought a one bidder freehold condo each under their own name unfortunately when I did the research for both condos mm. right um, not making money mm. Mm. stagnant not stagnant not losing losing oh, was it in like a certain location that yes makes it quite hard to exit I think it's not in that it's, it's easy to exit it's just that when they bought in it was a high PSF oh okay high PSF high and three, five, yeah. so um, and if they wanted to let go at a certain price to make money it's not going to happen at that point of time Probably have to wait out. So what happened was that yeah, lot both their names. So what happened? In the what happened in the end? What was their plan? Couldn't sell. sell. Not to sell because if you sell now, you both have to take a huge loss. So even up to now, they still have not sold. I think now I'm not. I'm not sure about now because this was really some years back. But oh. at the point of time, um, really they just had the con- the only option was to continue renting. Mm. You either rent or you let go of both at a loss. Wow. I don't think it's break even. It's going to be a loss. Do you give any advice? You know what they should have done. Back then, when you guys first, mm, I, not not what should have done. I mean, what was done was already done. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. how to salvage that situation? They have to wait out to see how the market moved. Should they have? And because it's, and because it's one bidder yeah. as well, mm-hmm. so in the first place, one bidder is really hard to exit, mm. and then now it's one bidder in two different projects which are both not making money. It becomes even harder. So unless you want to bite the bullet mm. and just say, "Ah, oh, I'll take the loss yeah, take the and loss just and move then. on." Mm. I mean, personally for me, I would actually advise to just sell. Because even, to be honest, even if we had put it up for sale then, yeah, I don't even know how long it would have taken to, to sell off. Yeah. Mm, to exit. La. It's, a, it's a tough position, mm. right? Mm. Actually, this is quite a common uh, scenario. So mm. a lot of oh, times, like when clients come to us, mm. uh, it's also with the same question, you know, I'm holding on to properties, they're mm. not performing. Should I sell now or should I just wait out for the market to, to take a u-turn kind mm. but uh what, what do you think is some of like the mindset that they should consider i think if you're holding on to a smaller property and mm. then you have the means to you know okay for example like your client's um situation you're holding to two freehold um one, one beta beta. condominium perhaps you bought at one mil each mm. back then right so basically you have the um earning power mm. the earning capability to take a high loan if you both combine mm. income mm. And then you are now holding on to two stagnating properties. Yeah. The thing is that because uh, as I think we mentioned earlier in the episode that, you know, most of the time the property prices are able to, you know, out um appreciate more than mm. how much, you know, uh, people's incomes can grow mm. at a faster. Especially rate. the bigger properties. Especially. So uh, correct. So um I think it might be better to cut losses, mm. in my opinion, cut losses. But you know, when it comes down to it, people feel the pain. 
They yeah, but, but yeah, hurdle, like, it's that mental hurdle. hurdle. But at the same yeah. time, you don't want to be regretful, right? When Correct. you are reaching older, and then you thought you thought like, okay, at that time, you know, they might be also looking at certain properties, and mm. then they saw yeah. the growth at of those properties mm. that they didn't buy. And in the last three years, to be honest, we have seen how the prices of the bigger properties Correct, exactly. have moved. Yeah. So, like mm. right now, right? If let's assuming if they haven't offloaded the one bidder, yeah, and let's say that project is at most break even now. If they offload now, right? Wow, the price of mm. the property that they intend to buy, the prices were have moved a lot. Yeah, correct, yeah, correct. In fact, the last three years was also like a bull run. And I think it's a good litmus test. If your property or your overall portfolio in the last three years have not really moved mm. uh, much before COVID mm. up to now, mm. then maybe this is a sign that you should also think about restructuring your whole correct. portfolio into something that... While you're still young a, and you correct, can still exactly. take the loan. But as I think, I think it's, a, it's a very painful decision to cut loss. But think, for me, I always yeah. look at the bigger picture because ultimately, they are not just a uh, 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 D-I-N-K, you know, like dual income yeah. kids. They have kids. They, they need the place the... really for themselves. I mean, um, with the rental thing, you know, sometimes it's a bit disruptive also because you don't know whether your landlord also wants to sell the mm. place and then you have to move again and again and again. So I think these are things to consider. La. Oh, sorry, did we digress? <laughs> Let, let's go to the next one. So renovation needs, this one really depends on the unit condition, but it's a one better condo. So I think no Probably matter what. too much. But, I mean... Well, let's put it this way. You have choices. Depends on... You have 1,000 uh, options. Yeah. <laughs> 2,000 options under one mil. So, go for a more renovated unit so that you don't have to spend on renovation. Mm. Yeah. So, legal well, considerations. The good thing is that you can sell anytime. It's just that if you want to avoid your SSD, then you wait for three years. Um, This one definitely is my concern. Mm. The higher down payment, the higher mortgage. And as a single, I don't have a partner to depend off should something happen to my job. Mm. And at the point of time, I was transitioning from my, my career, um, receiving a fixed income into self-employment. Mm. And you know, our mm. self-employment income, it's unstable. Very fluid. Yeah, from month to month, it differs. Uh, it's a bit, uh, daunting, right? it's a bit daunting, daunting with a lot of mm. uncertainties. Um, that was the reason if, like why I didn't go for the condo in the end. Um, which is why in on hindsight, I think I shared on a previous episode, I do regret because previously in my fixed income job, I was receiving a good income, good CPF. I had so much cash stored up. Mm-hmm. If I had known then about... Oh, he's laughing at my pain. But no, anyway, no, no, guys... I, I, um, you say so much cash. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, because yeah, I, don't, like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't spend money like, and I just... Cash no, no, last time I really very frugal one. Like, don't go out, don't drink, don't party. You know, I'm a very good girl one. So all the cash just just like sitting at home, you know, earning the zero point, don't know how many percent pathetic interest that the banks are giving. So in, at the point of time, also like many years ago, 10 years ago, property was not that expensive, you know. Mm. Yeah. And there's not a lot of restrictions. If you took action then. I would be rolling in <laughs> gold. Guys, you, you wouldn't see me here. <laughs> you you would not see me here now. I'm cash. rolling okay, in my You won't be bringing cash, you'll be swimming in cash. Swimming and then like just collecting rental right. income. Okay, guys. Oh, but never mind, never mind. Shall not look back on regrets. Yes, yes. Okay. So that was all my regrets. Lah. And also the maintenance cost. Because aside from mortgage, you have your MCST fees. Yeah. Uh, I think averagely for one bidder, maybe, is it about If you're in CCR, it's even higher. Yeah. I've seen right. one bidder before where the MCST is like $500 a month and the agent has the cheek to tell me, yes, it has been lowered already. Yeah. Was, it a huge, been lowered already? was it a huge project though? No, small project. But it's oh, not like project. Class, right. It's a boutique and it's because a Because of atas. the share value, yeah. right, you have to split to lower number mm, of Yes, correct. Mm. And it's supposed to be like those are like high SCS kind of uh, project. Oh. But I, I just find paying like, like $500 for MCST a month to be a lot. Mm. You know, uh, I don't, Especially I, I can't. Especially if you don't really use I can't justify, I can't justify it. Yeah. And most boutique projects don't even have, have the that. full facilities. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. So I really cannot just. Might just be a transponder. But guys, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm just really a very frugal person, and I'm I'm very calculative. Okay. <laughs> it's good. I think there are a lot of very frugal shamins out there yeah. also. Yeah. So neighborhood amenities. So firstly, uh, for most of the condos, you do get your full condo facilities unless you're going for boutique projects. But boutique mm-hmm. projects, most things you have is probably a pool and a small little room with two machines that they call a gym. La. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you pay a good condo, actually the majority of the estate could be okay. You could be surrounded by HDB amenities, so no issues. Number 10. Mm. As we saw just now, just doing a quick search for one bidders below $1 million, we have about 2,057 units. If this is going to be your forever home, no worries. But if you do want to exit, I actually think that a two-room BTO will exit much easier than mm. your one mm. better condo. In fact, I think even just if you look at option three, one better condo, right? I think there mm. are also a lot of like micro segments that we can think about for one better condo because sometimes for one better, you can have like a duplex 
kind of configuration. You have maybe like a roof terrace up there because if you're talking about 700 or 800 square feet, mm. there are certain properties that are like that. There are also like single floor plate, kind of one bidder. Mm. And of course, the other thing that we want to pay attention is the location. Yes. If let's say, after analyzing and looking at this comparison table, option one, two, and three, you have your BTO, resale flat, and a one bidder condo. If the analysis and after doing all the financial check makes sense for you to go into a one bidder condo, there are still certain frameworks that you can still utilize to ensure that if you go into a one bidder condo, that gives you the better ease of exit in future. Thinking about like the location, the amenities, um, who are your exit? Is it near maybe town center? Because mm. for one bidder, you're also looking at like maybe single professionals who's going to buy after you mm. uh, when you choose to exit in future. So there are still a lot of uh, consideration factors to ensure that after analyzing, okay, if I think that I want to go into a one bedroom condo, um, utilize some of the frameworks that we're talking about uh, to help you make the best selection out of your options available. Well, and I think the thing that worries me is that, you know, given the same quantum, Charmaine's budget mm. is about $840,000. Right now, if I key in below $840,000, right, there are two better options. Yeah. Mm. So I guess like if uh, with the same amount of money, if someone can buy a two bidder mm. versus a one bidder, It'll be easier to exit. Uh. It'll be easier yeah. to exit. And the two better you do enjoy a bigger space star. Mm. So this is basically like a table of comparison uh, when I was doing my thing. So I think let's go to the last slide for Charmaine Questions now. to ask herself. Yeah. Just um, to sum up. To yeah, look at me and ask yeah, actually these are the questions I ask myself. <laughs> I don't think there is a right or wrong answer to this. This is very individualistic and it really mm. depends on what your life goals and, and, and you know what your aspirations, your mm. aims. So first thing, do you like a bigger or smaller size property? Do you want to stay near your parents? Do you prefer to stay alone or would you like to have the option to rent? Mm. Do you foresee yourself getting married in the next few years? And are you confident to sustain the mortgage on your own? I think this is the one that is uh, most worrying because for private, right, if you can't sustain what happened, your bank will repossess. HDB, I think they can do some negotiation A little bit with more you. Lenient. Yes. Okay. Um, and personal values, do you prefer to be the debt-free sort from properties and maybe whatever extra money you had, go and invest in stocks? Or do you see property as your investment tool? Mm. Is this going to be your forever home? And are facilities important to you? Because for me, like I said, right? Uh, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Really matter. Some of the HDBs, right, mm. can also be located very close to a lot of the yes, facilities. Yes, and near the community centers yeah. and things like that. Yeah. If you're near to a safra. Then right, downstairs I got the, mm. what, those fitness thing. Active I also never go. <laughs> yeah. And I think more importantly, like if you do want to go to the condo, I guess is Charmaine able to wait a while to build up funds to see if she can at least push for a two bidder because I rather she go for a two bidder than mm. a one bidder in any case. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, so I think what we've done is also to put together all these questions. If let's say you uh find yourself falling into this um case study for Charmaine that we're talking about. Then these are just some of the comparison table that we've done, some of the questions that are important to ask yourself before you make that very important decision uh, for yourself, especially if this is your very first property. Yeah, I think maybe just to share. So mm. in the end, uh, I think from the sharing, you can see that I actually went for option two, mm. which was so, the resale and I went for a three-room flat because in the end, I felt that I want to stay near where most of my family members are and I prefer bigger size. And I would love to have the option to rent. Although now I kept the room empty. Mm. But you know, if I become an, like a, a really old lady one day, don't want to work, and mm. I really want to rent you out the room for option, income, yeah. I have that option. Mm. And at least I know for this, I can sustain the mortgage comfortably without a partner, even with my self-employment uh, job. Yeah. yeah. So you really need to um, understand what's your goals, what's mm. your uh, horizon for this next property, and what you're comfortable with. What uh, you're comfortable with. And if, let's say, you do need to have a couple of backup plans that your whatever decision that you're going for does give you that backup plan, should you or should the need arise mm. for that. Yeah. Okay. So, mm. okay. So, that's for Charmaine. Uh, I think just to sum up, um, I think her profile was 35 years old, deciding between uh, age... One thing to move up of her parents. Yeah. Wow. Yes, wanting to move up, one thing, her own independence. Yeah. And then these were just some of the considerations. So hopefully, she to, mm. yeah, one thing to add, mm. right? She needs to also rank her mm. priorities because yes. of all these questions, right? Everything is so important. Correct. Then I think it's going to be hard to find any one property that satisfies everything. Mm. Correct. You want a big property, you want to stay near your parents, you want to have the option to rent. But realistically, you need to look at uh, yeah. firstly your funds. La. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what options do you have? Based on these funds, and then the plus, key. you know, you see like, okay, I want to be flexible, you know, mm. I, I might be single, I might want to, correct, you know, correct. have a partner in the future and all these things. I think, uh, 
you can quantify yes. some of these questions mm -hmm. and then to say like, okay, if I certain I want certain things, this might come, you know, at a more expensive price. I no, so, so, so like what you said, uh, so for me, I did prioritize because in the end, I was also looking at some place in Canberra, they have newer flats, which I possibly can get like squeezed into the quantum. Mm. But I think I took a train ride to a public transport ride from like uh, around Thompson Bishan to Canberra. Check out the area. Uh, just to see how, whether I can tahan the ride home. Uh. And I was like, wow, very long. So experiencing is key. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's okay because now if the train is fast, but just that compared to what I'm used to, mm. I do find it a, a little long. Mm. Which is why mm. in the end, I was like, it's okay. I'll go for something older, but something nearer. Mm. Yeah. Because so, all your family is already in the yeah, area. Everything I'm familiar with. So to all you Charmaines out there, hope my analysis has helped. And now let's go to the next profile. The main difference between Charmaine and Maverick is that of course it's look at his income. There's no numbers in it because it's just a high Too income earner. Really. There's no cap. <laughs> in fact, this so, cluster I feel is probably one of the rare few clusters in Singapore where you find freehold with a good density. <laughs> you can get the cash and then just repay your family members. Like yep, at yep. least right, you get into the private market. Yep, yep. The, the MF loan, loan uh, mother father loan. MF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you practice, practice. I do not. But it's really rolling, right? Are we? We just started. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. Damn. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Yeah, I want this. 